What's poppin'? Smello back at you with another video. And today what we're gonna be discussing is arrangement. This is a requested topic. You know, it's been requested a few times. So if you wanna see a specific tutorial or learn about a specific topic, be sure to make the recommendation in the comments. I read all of them. Can't get to all of them, but sometimes I do. So I did it live, but the video came out bad. So I'm gonna do one example and then I'm going to do one live. Before we get into it, please put a like on the video. Help your boy out. Let's go. So before we get started, one thing I wanna let you know, the Omega One Shot Kit is out now. You can go and get that. The way the video is gonna break down is intro, chorus, which consists of two parts, then the verse, which consists of three parts. You can see them all here. We're gonna zoom in first and focus on the intro. We are working at 140 BPM. We are also working in double time. So all of the format that I'm gonna mention is for double time. The intro is going to be anywhere from eight to 16 bars. In most cases, you wanna have it as eight because people have a short attention span nowadays and you wanna get right to it. So with this beat that we have, we have an eight bar intro. Now with that, let's go over the elements. So when you look at the beat, these patterns right here and this pattern right here, all of those are the melody. So in the intro, what you wanna do is strip away most of the melody, but have just enough to tease what's about to come. So you see, I only have two melodic elements. And with those, it's very simple and the intro is very bare. Now to create some type of buildup, I put a riser right here. creates a buildup and it also creates some suspense for the drop that's coming. But that's the simple part with the intro, you just make it really bare. Now some other things that you can do, you can throw some automated filters in there and stuff like that. You can put different effects on it to make it unique. But in most cases, you won't hear any effects. It's gonna be very bare in most cases. When I say in most cases, I really mean in most cases. If you go and listen, there's not gonna be on most songs that you listen to, that are industry songs, a crazy intro with a bunch of effects. It's just gonna be very simple in most cases. Now we're gonna discuss the chorus, which consists of two parts, the pre-hook and the hook. Now again, we're working in double time. The chorus is going to be 16 bars total. So before we go over the first eight bars, what I want you to do is hear the actual hook. Now, the reason that I played that is because that is when the beat, in my opinion, should be at its fullest. The actual hook point is when the beat should have all the instruments playing. I also have an impact, but we'll get to the impact later. Now we're gonna get to the pre-hook. This is a thing with arrangement and a theme that I want you to take and look at for the rest of the beat that we go through and also the live example that we look at. Each part of the beat that you are working on is about separating it from the last part of the beat that you worked on. So if we look at all of this from the intro to the end of the chorus, what is it doing? You start off pretty bare, you add a little bit more, and then you add everything else. So that's the first element of arrangement that I want you to take note of in all of this. Now, as far as the second thing that you'll notice, it's about different variation within the arrangement. When I originally made this video, I had it as just a four bar loop with no variation over the course of eight bars or anything as far as everything that I composed so I could show you how to make variations within the arrangement. Most of the variation that you're gonna see is gonna come through the transitions. Some of it is gonna be a whole variation for a whole section of the beat. So pay attention to those two things as we go on. Let's listen to it going to the pre-hook. What happens there? Well, as far as this transition, it has the build up and then the release, basically. Also what happens, we also bring in a layer over the melody. 
This instrument right here, these chords are what bring the most energy to the beat. So we bring those in along with some hi-hats in the 808. on top of everything that we already did. So those extra instruments give us more energy and it's still building up to the hook. Now there are a lot of different ways you could do this, but that is up to you to decide, you know, what to take away, what to put in, because you could have this whole pre-hook with no drums. You could do that. And the one other thing that we do to build suspense is a whole beat drop. Now we already listened to the hook, so let's just listen to how this goes into the hook. So boom, don't have to explain it. That's where all the energy is at the hook. That completes the chorus, which consists of the hook and the pre-hook. So let's talk about the verse now. Again, we're working in double time, 140 BPM. The standard for verses is 24 bars total. 24 bars total, that's the standard right now. There are occasions where it'll be 32 bars for a double time tempo. Usually that's gonna be for more upbeat music stuff that's like 160 and up. But today we're gonna be working with the 24 bar verse format. It is broken down into three parts, the verse beginning, the verse middle, then the verse close. I'm gonna break down how I do these. So we're gonna to listen to the verse beginning and see how it goes into the beginning. So let's go over the verse beginning. What did we do? So when you look at the hook, the hook is full. The hook is the fullest the beat is gonna be. So how do we differentiate the verse beginning from the hook? By taking a lot of the energy away again. So what do we have as far as the melody? We only have one melodic instrument playing with all the drums playing. So that's the first part. Now the reason that we do that, or the reason that I do that, is because when it comes to the verse middle, we're gonna give some energy back to it. Now with this, let's take a quick look at what we did. I did a drum drop. What is the drum drop? It's a transition into the beginning of the verse. And I also put a fall effect in there. Now, as far as this whole hi-hat pattern, there are no rolls in the original hi-hat pattern. I made a whole variation just for this. Also, I put the kick in the 808 around the end of the bar. I dragged it and all that stuff. and then everything went back to normal. So I got real freaky with it, but you don't even have to really do that. You could just pull all the drums away and have it hit on the snare and all the drums come back in just to help take the energy away and then smack them with some more energy again with the drums. That helps us get into the groove of the verse and stuff like that. Now let's take a look at the verse middle and break that down. Now this is what I usually do, and I would recommend paying attention to this in a lot of the beats that you listen to as far as industry beats, type beats, all of that stuff. I said we have to give it back some energy when it comes to the verse middle. So what did we do? I told you this is the most energetic part, those chords, those synth chords. So I brought those back. I took some things away as well to differentiate it. What did I take away? I took away the kick and the snare, leaving just the clap and the 808 and the hi-hats. So the whole melody is going, but as far as the drums, I pulled away some of the drums. So that differentiates it from the verse beginning. Didn't have to do any drops, didn't have to do any transition effects or anything like that. Didn't have to get fancy on the verse middle. Now let's talk about this verse close really quick because it gets kind of deep. And I'm gonna tell you first that it doesn't have to get deep. It does not have to get deep. It can be very basic. Now the thing about the verse close is it's supposed to be kind of bare like the intro. So what do you do to make it really bare? Like the intro, well, you take away all the drums. That's one way of doing it. Let's listen to it with the halftime off just so you can get the basic gist. Now that was super basic. That was super basic when you take away all the extra stuff that I added that I'm gonna go over now. Let's get more in depth and talk about how I took this over the top. So when we talk about the melody, what I did was two things. So when you look down below, you'll see the two automation clips that I made. Let's talk about those very quick. So I have halftime. You can look at the settings. All of that is good. It's very regular, very generic. It's on one bar. 
I'll put that over the bell melody. So I put it in halftime, click here, created the automation clip. And what I did was choked it all the way through the song, all the way up to that point and then brought it in. Same thing for this instrument right here. I used a fruity filter. So you hear what that did. And again, choked it through the whole beat and just brought it in around that point as far as the verse close. Now let's talk about this, the other thing that I added, which was a bass. <laughs> which guess what? It's a one shot. It's one of the one shots I made. Hey, one of the one shots made the video and I forgot about it, but let's listen to it. And also we dropped away this whole chorus part and use that transition right there. That's the same transition from the intro. Now I'm gonna say this, as far as differentiating this from the pre-hook, if you make it very similar to the intro, that will save you some brain power as far as trying to figure out how to differentiate the verse close from the pre-hook. And just to end as far as the verse close, you can also call it a bridge or look at it as a bridge. But the thing is, when you look at other music and bridges and stuff like that, like R&B, what happens during those bridges? Like it's a whole chord change and stuff like that. So to me, I don't consider them real bridges, but if you think of it like a bridge, that may help you as far as differentiating it on a mental level, but yeah, that's basically it as far as this beat. So after I got done doing all of this, what happened? Well, I took the scissors or whatever this is, the box cutter, cut all the automation, then selected this whole part from the chorus all the way to the verse close and control B, control B, control B. And we will very briefly go over a couple things as far as the end. All I did for the end was bring back the halftime. And what I did for the fade out was I went to the master channel. I went to create automation clip because we're not going to take it into Edison and fade it out. None of that goofy shit. Nope. Now what you want to do, you're going to left click, make a point somehow. But at the top of the song, where it's supposed to be the regular percentage that it's supposed to be, you want to go to copy value right click and copy value. You pretty much make your fade on your automation clip, however you wanna do it. Go here and click paste value at where the fade begins and boom, the whole beat is gonna be at the volume it's supposed to be at in the master channel and just begin to fade. And all of that will go into your render when you go to render it down. Don't gotta listen to the whole thing. You see it works. I got a beat made out of all one shots. We're gonna arrange that. Now I already got the drum separated, but the whole melody I got on one pattern. If you're not aware what you do to break it all from one pattern is you go to patterns while you're on that pattern, you go to split by channel, boom, it all splits up in there. Now what you're gonna do, you're gonna select the first pattern, you're gonna hold shift and control, select all the patterns, and then boom, drag it on there. Make sure you drag it all the way to the left. Hit control B until you get somewhere in the forties. And we're gonna do this all live. Now we're gonna go based on what I just said. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take away all the drums, all the drums, we're gonna take that away. And we want this to be kind of bare. So let's listen to some of these elements. We're keeping that. We're gonna take away some of these strings. We're gonna get rid of the bells. We're gonna get rid of the long string tension. I'm gonna add a transition effect in later. I'm just going fast right now, just so you can get the gist. So from there, I'm gonna add a hi-hat. We're gonna take away the kick. So boom, we got the whole chorus right there. Now, this is where the chorus will end. So to differentiate this, what we're gonna do, we're going to take away that melody right there. Take away that, take away the strings as well. To take away the kick. What I just did, I have an idea for how I want this to transition into the hook as far as the verse in, and I took away the snare in the pre-hook that was already there. So now it sounds like. And what I'm actually gonna do, I'm still gonna have the snare actually going in the bridge or the verse close. Let me construct it very quickly. 
And what I'm gonna do for this last part, I'm gonna pull away the snare. So now we have a pretty bare arrangement. Everything is pretty cool. I'm gonna add a couple drops and stuff in there. So I'm gonna take this cutter tool. I'm gonna hold shift. I'm gonna cut up to the snare right there when the verse begins. Cut all that, it's gonna get rid of all that immediately. See that? You see that? I'm gonna add an extra 808 in there. I'm gonna cut this right here, slide that in there. Now I'm trying to do the most. We're gonna sync up the hi hats right there. And see, this is without no effects yet. Like, you see how much I got going on with no effects? So I got a few transition effects I threw in there. And we got this one right here. Of course, got to turn the volume down on these. And also at the end, I have this. What I got to do is cut this. I like all of this, all of this. Control B, we have a second verse. And most of the songs that you listen to, Cass is doing one verse and they're getting out of here. In some cases, they'll have two verses, not really doing three. Let's grab the hook, copy, go to the end. Control V, you know I can make whatever type of outro I'm gonna do, which could be something as simple as just one part of the melody, or it could just be the whole melody without the drums, however you decide to do it. I'm gonna let you listen to the whole beat so you can see the transitions and stuff that I put in on. That should give you a thorough scope on how to arrange your beats. If you made it this far, I appreciate you. Again, the beat is coming up in a second, but be sure to subscribe, click the notification bell. Thank you, I appreciate you. Again, the Omega One Shot Kit is out now. Go and cop that. This whole beat is made with nothing but the one shots. And most of the transition effects are in my Mellow DB's kiss and stuff like that. But other than that, I'll see y'all another day. Somehow, some way, I'm out.